trying to troubleshoot the turbo waste gate. So what I did is I took off the uh, oxygen sensor here, um, the front oxygen sensor, and then I stuck a, uh, this is a camera. A uh, camera um, you can hook to your phone and stick it into the hole here, see? Stick it in that hole and then you can see the wastegate. And then when I had it in the hole, then I stuck my hand way down in here and then I could grab the, you hear that? I could grab the actuating arm wastegate and then I could rattle it and I'll show you what that video looks like but Basically, what I'm what I'm seeing is that the yeah the wastegate uh, is loose, so I'm gonna have to replace the turbo. Today we're gonna be working on a 2010 Audi A4, and I'm replacing the turbo. So the turbo on this car has a bad wastegate, and so we're gonna replace it. So before we start, we gotta replace the. Um, we gotta disconnect the uh, battery because I don't want to cause any trouble if I hit an electrical connector. So go to the trunk and now here's the battery. Um, you can see this is the negative cable here. And we're going to take this off. It's loose. Take it off. The trunk lid. So I'll probably put something there, like the spare tire, so that I can't close it. All right. So now I'm gonna take the cover off. Filter assembly. All right. So I'm gonna take this. connector right here has to come off. Alright, now that this wire is off, this hose is off, I'm going to pull this whole thing out. Alright, so now we're going to uh, spray all the bolts with this uh, I like this aero coil. You can use Rust-Oleum or uh, liquid wrench, whatever. Um, but that's the one I like. So, um, yeah. So these are the turbo bolts. Oxygen sensors off. Back here. Let's 
7 8 inch oxygen sensor remover. Got to get those bolts off the uh, catalytic converter. I'm gonna try to get the one way in the back first, so that um, you know why not go for the hardest one first, get that one done, and then do the rest. All right, I got the, I got that uh, the troublesome bolt. But it really wasn't that hard. Um, I just broke it loose. So, you see my uh, breaker bar handle here, like extension. This is just a piece of uh, wiring conduit, I think. But, um, can't even see what I did. I'll have to explain it to you because it's so buried in here. Here it is. Oh man, I got that baby off. So here's how I did it. Woo! This uh, 15 socket, and it was it's an impact socket. And I'll tell you how long this thing is. All right, just for. Uh, this is exactly how long it is from the end of the socket to, to the end of the ratchet is about 11 and a quarter or 29 centimeters this here uh, extension is like a 9 inch extension yeah. and that socket's about an inch and a half so that's how I did it and you just basically stick it down in there and then you can hold the end of the socket by putting your hand underneath right here on the catalytic converter and you can touch with your middle fingers um, the nut and you can guide that uh, socket on there. So all right next step Uh, and 15 millimeter socket, straight through socket. Got her. All right, now I got all these bolts off. Ooh, look at that. 
comes back. Wow, look at that. It comes right off. Alright, I could take it off if I wanted. Well, let's keep going. Now I gotta do the heat shield, I think. The one. And right here is the third one. We gotta take all three of those out. That one doesn't. That one. I don't know if that one's gonna be hard. That one might be hard. That one don't look too bad. Let's give it a shot. Alright, so um, three hours in and I had a bolt that I stripped. It was a heat shield six millimeter. This guy. And it didn't want to come out. I tried all kinds of stuff. Eventually what I ended up getting it out with was a T40 uh, Torx. I jammed it in there. I hit it with a hammer and jammed it in there. So let's see. This is the heat shield. Let's apply it on here better. Alright. Heat shield is off. This uh, vacuum port off of here, it's pretty simple to get off. The next step was to remove this hose. So what I did is I took a pick, this pick, this is like a hose removal pick. It's not an Audi one, it's just old school. And um, I stuck it stuck it into the band, opened it up. And pulled it off. And I'll take this uh, hose clamp off. This one, I'm going to take that off and just use a screw type when I put it on the new turbo. Just going to take off the bottom uh, belly pan. Got these screws here, you just turn them. So you take all those off. Alright, next we're going to take off this line here. This is a uh, M12 triple square. I already loosened it, so I'm not going to lie. Oil. Oil in this one. Alright. Just gonna leave that for now. And move on. Alright, I'm under the car now, and this oil line. Has there's two bolts, one here and one here. Number eight, uh, triple square. Please. All right. Well, anyway, I'm taking off this uh, 
oil line. The bolts were very, very easy to take off. But no, like they cracked right open. No, no problem. And there was two of them holding the bracket on. <laughs> right, next step is the coolant line. It's underneath the oil line, so here's the oil line, here's the coolant line. Now instead of a triple square, you can use a 3 8 Allen wrench, 3 8 inch. So you stick it up in here. Like that. And you can turn it. And once again, I already loosened that one. But that's next. Do that one. Take this one all the way out and see if any coolant comes out. Oh yeah, coming out. Oop, just a little bit came out. That's the bolt. And then it came out. thing it says to do is remove this hose from here. So got the connectors off um, so they go on like this okay what you have to do is stick a screwdriver down this part on top to get this clip off and you don't have to push down real hard just a little bit and then it clicks and then you pull it down yeah one more thing to point out is that this one has a little notch on the side and that one goes to the I think that's the diverter valve and this one does not have a notch so that one goes on the other one that's how you know which one is which come on now we're supposed to remove this is the oil return line to the engine you're supposed to take these two bolts out here and remove this oil return line. Okay. And just for reference, there's the turbo outlet or inlet, whichever, I don't know. And then this one. Gotta get those, so those are triple squares. Alright, so there, there is the... Uh, taking off this bolt here now. They're very loose. It and it uh, goes on the 
tube with the prongs pointing towards the tube. Flat side towards the engine block. Disconnect the coolant uh, line. So on the top of the engine, there's this coolant line here, and it goes down in front of the oil filter. So we have to take off. Right here, this bolt is a T30. That bracket. And then also, there is a right there, you can see it. Right down here, another T30. This is hard to get to. And then we're going to disconnect this clamp right here, and then this rigid line goes to a rubber line. Goes all the way to the turbo and bolts on here, but you can't get to that while the turbo is on. Well, you might be able to, but we're not doing that. Yeah, that one when I raised up that hose, then all this coolant, all the coolant that was in this reservoir drained out the pipe um, down here. So that was surprising. That wasn't supposed to happen. Take off this uh, uh, right. right here. There's a uh, a bracket that holds the. Of the engine, and there is a right there, you can see right there a 13 millimeter bolt that we have to remove.
All right, here is the catalytic converter uh, connection to the, the pipe. So I'm going to remove this bottom bolt here. I already loosened it. It's a 12 millimeter, uh, 13 millimeter. So after I took out the one bolt, one, the bottom bolt from that uh, cat hanger, uh, I was able to push the catalytic converter back off these uh, studs. So that's all off now. Um, so now I need to remove. nuts right here and those are uh, 12, 12 millimeter holy cow these aren't even loose I mean these aren't even tight at all Oh, because this is still on. Gotta take that off. Alright, well, I did not have to take those studs out. I just had to pull on it real hard, and then it came off. Well, got it off. Let's see if we can get it off the rest of the way. There we go. Kind of zoomed in too far. Alright, let's see if we can get all this shit out of the way. Get out of the way. Disconnected. It's still hanging on here. baby so now I got the old one and the new one and I gotta transfer everything from the old one to the new one I don't know if I really want to make a video of all this but we'll see I'm not gonna videotape I'm not gonna do everything that needs to get swapped over but obviously this pipe needs to get swapped over. This bracket needs to get swapped over. This hose needs to get swapped over. Some kind of vacuum dealio here needs to come over so I'm gonna work on that
All right, so I'm going to, uh, I'm taking off the uh, bolts off the bottom of the catalytic converter to the uh, downpipe because I want to put an e eBay uh, test pipe on. So what I did is uh, I just got a bunch of uh, extensions going right to the bolt at the bottom. I did one already, came right off. No problem with the um, impact driver, battery powered impact driver. So let's do the rest of them and see what happens. All right, I got all the bolts out. Now, she'll just come right out. Oh, baby, come to Papa. All right, here we got the uh, old cat here and the eBay test pipe and on the eBay test pipe I put this uh, 90 degree elbow I'll put all the uh, parts part numbers in the description of the video so you can order it from Amazon or eBay whichever and uh, yeah so we're gonna put this in I gotta transfer this guy over here See how it goes. But, um, oh yeah, I may as well show you. Oops. What's going on here? All right. This here is the whiskey, and if you look at this, it's loose. And if I can, if you, uh, grab this rod here, that's what opens it. loose which is due to the fact that this is loose up here now if you theoretically um, shorten this rod it it might help a little but like this right here is the problem, see? So it's loose at this point. It's also loose up in here, but because it's loose there, there's not really anything you can do about it. And that's the problem. So that's why that's sitting in the garbage can. So now I got the test pipe all bolted in with the uh, L, L uh, whatever that thing is, this thing. 
elbow. All right, so now I need to take this gasket off here, clean it up, put the turbo on, hook it all up. Finagle it in there, finagle it out of there. <laughs> is I had to um, loosen those plates on the bottom a little bit I loosened them and then I tightened them back up and then I got it on there straight um, I just I didn't loosen those plates up at all and I could not get the manifold on tight to the gasket um, there was like an eighth inch gap and I couldn't figure it out so then I loosened those plates and tightened them back up and then I could get it tight to the gasket so now I'm tightening I, I'm just I got this uh, nuts on the studs and I'm just tightening it up now you're supposed to tighten them in a particular way um, to 25 foot pounds This one first, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And you do a little at a time. And then finally you do the 25, no, sorry, 18 foot pounds on each one that's 25 millimeters. All right, so now I got the test pipe bolted up. And that's the eBay test pipe I got for like $68. I'll put the um, link in the description. And my 90 degree elbow did not work. I couldn't get it to line up so that the oxygen sensor would fit in there in the back. But there's plenty of room now so I can get a different kind. I need a straight one instead of an angled one. All right, so moving on. I think the last thing, and, and also, um, I did not torque these. I just tightened them down real hard because uh, torque wrench, forget about it. Um, all right, I think the last thing I took off was this coolant line that bolted here and this uh, clamp right here. So now I'm gonna hook that back up. All right, so now we're just buttoning everything up back up. Um, this is the oil return line. Needs to go back on with a new gasket, which I have. This is the oil line, and this needs to get bolted up to this one, and then bolted to here, and of course this got to get tightened up, and this is the, um, right here, this is the uh, turbo support bracket that needs to get tightened down. So we're going to do all that now. And then we have to plug in these connectors. Uh, one right here and then one up higher. Okay, getting there. Okay, now we're going to put the uh, uh, heat shield back on. 
Got everything else all hooked up now. Sensor back in. Um, yep. I already got the rear, the rear one right here. It's put in to the test pipe, and I couldn't get the elbow that I bought on there. So I, I, I'm gonna. I bought a straight uh, extension for the rear one, and I'm gonna put that on when I get it in a couple days. But good enough. I'm just gonna put it for now to start this up. Put this uh, hose back on here. There's a clamp right here, and then that will go on to air cleaner box. Goes in here. All right, got the air box back on. I think everything's on there now. I just gotta hook, hook the battery back up. Clean all the tools off. This is uh, Frost E G12 coolant. And I already pre mixed this. thing I want to point out is that um, I did fill up the turbo with oil um, through the oil line. Uh, I don't know if I videotaped that though, but I'll just show you where that oil line is. Okay. Here, this one right here, that's the, that's the oil line, and um, I used a turkey baster to fill it up, like put it in the oil, suck it up, put it in there before I put that um, banjo bolt in. Alright, I uh, just got to clean up my mess and we'll start it up. Took it for a test drive and runs great. Um, seems like all the power is back and uh, there's no leaks. So I think it's a success. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and check out. I'm going to be making more videos um, soon. I'm going to do rear shocks and 
headliner, a headliner sagging on here, so more to come. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.